our entity is central giant cell granuloma by Casey Cutler and Alex Eventwich. The definition of central giant cell granuloma is an uncommon interosseous idiopathic benign lesion that presents in the jaw. This lesion has been thought to be due to a reactive process within the bone, but it has a lack of supporting research to be a definite etiology. Therefore, the etiology is unknown. When viewing central giant cell granuloma histologically, multinucleated giant cells, macrophages, vascular canals, and fibroblasts are present within the connective tissue. The clinical symptoms of central giant cell granuloma can be found in two forms non-aggressive asymptomatic forms and aggressive forms. Most individuals are asymptomatic and usually appear with expansion of either jaw, the maxillary, or the mandibular, depending on the location of the lesion, causing facial and oral swell. These lesions are slow growing and do not cause cortical bone perforation, and also doesn't cause paralysis because the lesion itself does not invade or propagate around the nerve trunk. Individuals can also be symptomatic with pain, teeth movement, purple discoloration, and tooth loss. The clinical signs include root reabsorption, cortical bone perforation with expansion, osseous destruction, and reoccurrence can be present in individuals who are symptomatic and have an aggressive form of central giant cell granuloma. When palpating regions of this disease, it can also be tendered. The figure a, B, and C show the lesion expanding and destroying the antrum and extending into the sinuses. D and E show the destruction of the floor of the orbit, palate, and extension into the nasal cavity. F shows the destruction of the base of the skull. Demographic. Central giant cell granuloma is an uncommon lesion. It accounts for less than 7% of all the benign lesions of the jaw. 60% of central giant cell granuloma cases are diagnosed in individuals under the age of 30. They are found in a ratio of 2 to 1 in women to men. These lesions appear in the jaw more than anywhere else in the body, but they can also be found in small bones of the hands and feet. They are found more commonly in the mandibular jaw over the maxillary jaw, the anterior over the posterior, and will normally cross the midline. So if this lesion is found within the first two decades of life, then it is most common to find the formation anterior to the first mandibular molar and anterior to the, the maxillary canine. Radiographic findings. The lesions are localized unilaterally to the periradicular area and can be found anywhere in the maxillary or the mandibular jaw most commonly the anterior mandible. The edges are usually well-defined radiolucent borders due to the slow growth, while the faster growing lesions will present ill-defined borders. The shape is normally round or ovoid. The majority of these lesions are multilocular, but some can also be unilocular. These multilocular lesions will have a mix of radiolucency and radiopaque internal structures. The structural changes of the jaw can produce displacement external root resorption, and cortical expansion. The inferior alveolar nerve canal can be displaced inferiorly when the lesions are located in the posterior body of the mandible. Picture A shows destruction of the alveolar bone apical to the maxillary right first and second premolar and distal to the maxillary right first molar with apical loss of lamina dura of both premolars. Picture B shows destruction of the floor of the maxillary sinus. The majority of these lesions are single, and the unilocular lesions have a mean size of 4.05 centimeters, while the multilocular lesions have a mean size of 7.38 centimeters. Differential interpretation. One differential interpretation is keratocystic odenogenic tumor. It appears as a well-defined radiolucent lesion similar to central giant cell granuloma. In this pantomograph on the right mandible, you can see the well-defined radiolucency. A second differential interpretation is radicular cyst. A radicular cyst is characterized by a well-defined radiolucency around the apex of the tooth, which is also characteristic of cent central giant cell granuloma. Uh, and in this periapical radiograph, you can see on tooth number 31, uh, 
the well-defined radio we can see uh, at the apex of the 31. The third differential interpretation is a mellow blastoma. This lesion is seen as a radiolucent, well-defined lesion uh, commonly in the mandible, similar to central giant cell granuloma. In the CT scan here, uh, there's a widened, well-defined radiolucency on the left side of the mandible. Treatment. There are two types of treatment. First is corticosteroids are a, they're a good non-surgical alternative uh, to help cure or reduce the size of the lesion. Um, so you can have minimal resection, and this prevents functional or aesthetic deficits uh, for the patient. Uh, another way is resection uh, by itself. It's a quicker route to eliminate the granuloma. However, it's more invasive and can result in deformities of the jaw. So ideally, we would want to use both uh, the corticosteroids and then resect the mineralized granuloma. A referral to an oral surgeon would be the best uh, for resection by itself, mainly because they're more experienced at invasive surgeries uh, over a general dentist. Uh, they're trained more extensively in the uses of general anesthesia. Uh, so if a patient wants to be sedated or fully anesthetized uh, and they want to do that, then it'd be best to go to an oral surgeon. Uh, also, the oral surgeons have the equipment and personnel readily on hand uh, to take on a case over, like this over a general dentist. And in this picture, we have Dr. Ebke here, uh, and he would be one that you could refer to. Uh, just to recap some key points, uh, in non-aggressive granulomas uh, usually show no pain. Uh, they do show expansion of jaw and swelling. Uh, for aggressive granulomas, there is pain, uh, tenderness, cortical bone perforation, teeth movement, purple discoloration, uh, reoccurrence, and tooth loss. Usually single lesions appear in the anterior mandible. They're well-defined, multilocular, round lesions that resorb bone and teeth. They displace the teeth and the inferior alveolar nerve canal. And for treatment, uh, like we stated before, corticosteroids uh, as a non-surgical technique reduces the size of the lesion and preserves aesthetics and function after the resection. Here are resources and here are image credits.